Hi, real quick, you can find me on Twitter at SJ Brindley, and if you happen to have internet right now, my slides are at flightlist.us. Uh, flight, yeah, flightlist.us WCUS 2015. So my name is Stephanie. I am a designer, I'm not a developer. As our wonderful MC said earlier, I do have a degree in graphic design. I have done some front-end development. I do HTML, CSS, I've played around with PHP, discovered I really hate it, and design is my passion, so I am a designer. About four years ago, I moved from Indiana to Jacksonville, Florida because my toes were cold. I really like how Florida pretends to have winter, but I don't really have to put on a coat. Um, I have two children, a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. They can't wait until they're old enough to join us here at WordCamp. My husband, Jonathan, is a WordPress developer. About eight years ago, we started a company called Flightless, where we build WordPress websites together. At this point in time, he does most of his work with Modern Tribe, and I am still working with Flightless with other people at this point, building WordPress websites and also doing some logo design. So we're going to talk about streamlining the web design process. Since I first started freelancing, I've been trying to streamline my process, making it easier to work with clients and get good feedback, and keep projects from spinning out of control. So we're going to play a little game. It's the have you, it's the have you ever game. And I'm going to use the other thing. There we go. OK, have you ever? Have you ever started working on a website mock-up before you even knew what the content would be and found yourself making countless revisions, wondering when it would ever end? If you've experienced this, raise your hand. I want to see how many of you. OK, I think that's more than half the room. Have you ever had a client that gets so hung up on lorem ipsum that they just can't focus on the design? <laughs> and now how about this one? Have you ever struggled with a committee? You're working with a subcommittee, you think everything is done, you're ready to go, you go to bed, you're so relieved, you wake up in the morning, you have emails from everybody else on the committee asking you to make changes. <laughs> this is why you need style tiles. But as you saw a moment ago, you're probably asking yourself, what the heck is a style tile? Let's look at some definitions. From a list apart, I'm sure you've heard of them before. They say, the style tile is a design deliverable that references website interface elements through font, color, and style collections delivered alongside a sitemap, wireframes, and other user experience artifacts. Hmm. Okay, let's try somebody else. Let's try the Creative Block blog. They say, style tiles are a visual reference to the design language of a website or other design deliverable. They help tell a story through fonts, color, and style collections. And when viewed in combination with wireframes, sitemaps, and other UI elements, they define that story in an accessible, client-friendly manner. Okay. Let's look at the official style tiles website. Style tiles are design deliverable consisting of fonts, colors, and interface elements that communicate the essence of a visual brand for the web. They help form a common visual language between the, between the designers and the stakeholders and provide a catalyst for discussions around the preferences and goals of the client. Uh-huh. So maybe you'd like me to try to say that without all the marketing speak and everything. So let's try this one. Style tiles bring together fonts, colors, and major design elements to give a structured visual impression of design ideas. Think of it as a crisp sketch. So you've heard all those definitions, but if you're like me, when I first read all those definitions, I still didn't really understand what a style tile was or what the heck I was even supposed to do with it. So I thought it would probably be helpful if I gave a demonstration of what a style tile is. So this is an example of a style tile. As you can see, it gives the impression of a website, but it's not actually a website. There's a logo, there's kind of an idea of a header, we have some potential colors, maybe what sorts of graphics we're going for, what a button will look like, how all the text interrelates together, but it's not really a website, it's just an impression of a website. So this is one example of a style tile, but I wanted to kind of take you through the process of actually creating and using style tiles. So I wanted to have real data to work with. So what I did was I came up with this company called ICE, and I have a survey that all of my business clients fill out for me before we get started, and so I actually had some friends pretend that they were the owners of the company ICE and had them fill out these surveys so I could get some data. So we had to figure out who ICE was and what they actually provided. So this is the information we got. ICE sells cubes that are superior to the competition. ICE cubes have consistent size and quality. 
plain cubes, and those enhanced with fresh ingredients. Ingredients like berries, herbs, and melons. And then in my surveys, I have these sliding scale questions of opposite adjectives, so light and dark, warm and cool, classic and modern, and they have to put a mark on the sliding scale of what their preference is, and then I weight them, and these are the adjectives that were most heavily weighted for that survey. So once I actually have the surveys, I understand who ICE is, what they sell, now I have to translate that into style tiles. So let's actually look at that first style tile again. This is that first one. You can see on the lower right-hand side, there are five of those heavily weighted adjectives that I used as the base point of actually creating the, the design. So for the word fancy, we have some italics. For the word energetic, I'm sorry, fancy is in script. Energetic is italics. And then we also have some coloring based off of the words light and cool. So this is a style tile that I created. Now let's look at the second one. This one actually has other heavily weighted adjectives. They just happen to be quite different from the first ones. I focused on the word glamorous here, and I chose the Broadway font using dark, high contrast look. Um, you can see that the sample images are different than the ones I used on that first one. And like I said, a lot of times clients, when they're choosing all of those um, questions on the sliding scale, you'll get some answers that seem to be opposite. And so this is probably not actually the design that they're looking for, but it can be helpful to show them what they're not looking for as much as what they do actually want. So let's go on to a third style tile. And this one, it has a lot of the same adjectives for the first style tile, but I added in the word strong there. And because of the word strong, we used much brighter and bolder colors. There's a lot of herb green and berry red. Um, along with the word fresh here, you can see a lot of times when you're looking at packaging, the word fresh, they'll use a nice light scripty font. But because of the word strong, I wanted to keep it thick and friendly to keep with that thing. The, head, the headers are weighty and angular. Um, so again, this is just a third style tile. And so it gives them some visual ideas of where to go and what we're going to go with. And again, with a style tile, it actually allows you to separate the design from the content in a very natural way. And because it's so stripped away and clearly not a website, the client can actually focus on the visual design and let the content fade away. This is the beauty of style tiles. Because without worrying about content and sidebars and navigation, your client can decide if they want a website that looks like this or this or this. They're choosing an idea, not a design. But you're probably still asking, how does it actually streamline the process? The way that it streamlines the process is actually fairly simple and straightforward. With the style tiles, when you're starting with those at the beginning, you actually give the client the freedom to make lots of changes and to complain about this or that or say, but I don't like that color. Well, but your clients all hate this color. You can have those conversations before you're actually getting into the actual mock-ups of it. Um, so one of the things you can do is, if, again, if you're working with committees, you can take your style tiles and you can tell your subcommittee, give this to everybody on the committee. Let them complain. Let them make their changes, let us tweak it, make them happy before we actually get into the mock-ups. So that way, they're focusing on things like what the actual colors are and the fonts are instead of worrying about, OK, can we move the sidebar over three pixels? Um, so again, because it's a lot easier to change things like headers and buttons than it is to actually go in and make those structural changes to the mock-ups. You can also use your style tiles as a branding guide, and that's very helpful. There's a couple of different ways that you're going to want to use it as the branding guide. First off, as you're making design decisions later on in the process, you'll be referring back to your style tiles so you know what your design is going to look like. Also, when you're working with the developer, you can actually give the style tiles to the, to the developer early on so that he actually knows what direction you're going to be going with, even if you don't have the mock-ups ready yet. Also, you can reference the style tiles when you're actually creating the mock-ups. It makes the, the mock-ups go a lot quicker. And then finally, um, when you're working with your client and you're in the mock-up stage, they say, oh, but can we make this button look like this? You can say, well, we already talked about the buttons over here while we were working on these style tiles. And remember, we had this conversation that you liked this, but it was going to be hard when people were using mobile and this kind of stuff, and you can take them back to it and keep from having to make all of those changes during the mock-up.
process. And then how do you actually incorporate the style tiles into the process? So it's fairly simple, like I said. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you actually do style tiles at the beginning and you focus on the aspects of the design without worrying about the content and the structure and with the understanding that this is where you're going to be making those final decisions in relation to design. And then because style tiles are the content without structure, I always like to work with wireframes as well because they're kind of the opposite. They're the structure without the design. So I find that they work really well together. So for me, once I have both the style tiles and the wireframes, then I can very quickly and easily make my mockups at the end and figure out exactly where all the pieces are going to fit without having to take the amount of time that I might otherwise. And then also, if you would like some samples of style tiles that you can download and play with, if you go back to my website again, there's some samples that you can download. There's also a copy of the survey that I give to my clients. And I'm going to be hanging out over by the happiness bar afterwards. Thank you.